way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online, from the hottest issues to trends like Blackpink's VMA nominations of the Wazir and the first doggy pool at Hangang Park. We're joined by Erica for Social Media Minute. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you too. It's September. I know. I, I, yay! Yay? I don't know. It doesn't feel like <laughs> September yet, Erica. I'll yay when things cool down. <laughs> More, that is. <laughs> yeah, it, it will eventually get there. All right. Uh, let's jump into some of these buzzwords trending on social media outlets, uh, namely Blackpink's six different nominations at the upcoming VMAs. That seems to be something really exciting. Yes, uh, we're going to start with Blackpink, but uh, they're not the only K-pop group that has, um, you know, received nominations for the 2023 MTV VMA Awards. But let's do start with Blackpink. They have have six nominations at this year's MTV Video Music Awards alongside a bunch of other K-pop groups that have also received nominations. Now, according to um, a list of nominees announced by MTV on Friday, that's US time uh, over the weekend here, uh, Blackpink was nominated for six categories, including best editing, uh, best art direction, best choreography, best K-pop, Group of the Year and Show of the Summer. That's new, right? Show of the Summer. Is that like a post-pandemic thing? I'm assuming so, because, I mean, there are a lot of uh, major pop acts on tour, and Blackpink is certainly one of the scene stealers. Ah. That's right. All They've right. been touring extensively this yeah. uh in the first half of this year. Yeah, yeah. I think they're coming back to Seoul for, I think, the last leg of that world tour. Mm. How do you get tickets? I have no idea. (laughs) Always the big question. (laughs) Ask Diane. (laughs) All right. So at last year's awards, the quartet made its debut performance with its mega hit at the VMAs with the song Pink Venom. It was certainly a scene stealer. And now they're back to compete in six competitive categories. Gosh, um, the year just flew by, didn't it? (laughs) I feel like it was yesterday we talked about Blackpink performing Pink Venom at the VMAs. It really does. Here we are. Here we are. A year later. Um, yes, uh, it was a year ago that they performed uh, Pink Venom. Uh, it was uh, the de- debut performance in terms of, um, you know, it was the first K-pop mm-hmm. group that performed at the MTV VMAs girl group. Um, now, K-pop group Tomorrow by Together has also received a bunch of nominations, four in total, actually, uh, with the song Sugar Rush Ride. Uh, They received nominations in the categories Group of the Year, Song of the Summer, uh, Push Performance of the Year, and Best K-Pop, Girl Group 50-50, embroiled in a whole lot of, uh, yeah. Legal controversies. A lot of legal controversies. They have also earned three nominations for their song Cupid, uh, Group of the Year, Song of the Summer, and Best K-Pop Group. And um, Jungkook's actually debut solo single, mm. Seven, uh, was nominated for Song of the Year. There's more, actually. There's a whole bunch of uh, K-pop groups that were nominated for the VMAs. Seventeen and New Jeans were nominated also for Group of the Year. I mean, I've got to say, it's we say it so nonchalantly now because yeah. pop just moved fast. The timeline is incredible. And I mean, you just mentioned that Pink Venom feels like yesterday. Well, it wasn't. It was a year ago. And a lot has changed in the last few years. We can say without even flinching, the VMAs, many K-pop acts, not one, but many competing for the best pop group of the year. That's kind of exciting. You know, I, I'm I'm that generation. I grew up watching MTV. Me too. You know, MTV was the, the thing back in the day. It was so cool. And, uh, you know, I mean, I would never have imagined, you know, K-pop artists getting so many nominations for 
you know, the Video Music Awards, it, it was unthinkable back in the 80s and 90s when I grew up watching, you know, MTV. Anyways, it's it's amazing. That's that's what I want to say. Right. I mean, if you just stretch our timeline, just, you know, go further back, just a few decades, things were so different and we shouldn't undermine this moment. It's it's a glorious moment for K-pop. Yeah. And as for 50-50, it is absolutely bittersweet. But I'm hoping that, I mean, they get some of the summer. It was one of the most talked about, one of the most tick-tocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, song of the year despite the controversy that ensues so when can people actually watch the big oh, MTV yes. VMAs <laughs> well um, the 2023 MTV Video Music Awards is going to take place on September 12th uh, local time at Prudential Center in New Jersey in the U.S. All right. Should be a treat for all the pop fans. I'd be on the lookout for that. Let's turn our attention to our second buzzword of the day. Today's have Mountain Temple introducing, really? Vegan burger. <laughs> this is when you know that vegan is a is a hot keyword. It's a you know? thing. Yeah. Exactly. So Tehwamza Temple in Chilisan Mountain announced just yesterday that it has developed and is launching a vegan burger. Um, the Hwamsa Temple vegan burger uses buns made with rice flour uh, mm -hmm. as the main ingredient. It uses patties uh, made from soy protein. The cheese and sauces are all, of course, made from plant-based ingredients as well. I thought this was really interesting because, you know, Vegan food in the original vegan cuisine in Korea is temple cuisine, right? Mm. Uh, the monks in the mountains they 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 eat plant based, um, you know, meals, mm. and for them to launch something so I don't know trendy, <laughs> so yeah, exactly trendy to reach out to the public. I think this is really cool. I think it's really excellent, too, and yeah. timely because people are talking much more about vegan burgers. Just look at the hashtags online. We still call them hashtags, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if not, please let us know. It's hard to keep up. But you're right. I mean, I, I think the first thing I imagine when I think temple food is namur, these like sautéed vegetables and, and not so much vegan burger, but certainly keeping up with the times. But here's the thing. Right. This apparently isn't the first First time the temple has done something really creative to reach out to a wider audience yeah so um this temple is is known for doing you know launching creative projects uh including a photo contest one year that had to feature red plum blossoms which you can find easily um on temple grounds if you visit like korean temples you see a lot of uh, plum blossoms especially red plum blossoms down south mm. uh they're one of the first flowers spring flowers to blossom um, they also uh, held a yoga festival mm -hmm. to commemorate World Yoga Day one year. And then they, they, one year they, they held an outdoor movie night. They screened movies. And then what they did was, well, the, the screen of the movie wasn't creative in, on its own, but uh, they installed this humongous mosquito net that everyone sat under, you know, <laughs> probably they, they did this in the middle of summer, you know, in the mountains, the mosquitoes, they can get really pesky. So that's one of the things they did. Uh, they also introduced eco-friendly merchandise, like uh, bags made from recycled coffee sacks. So Thank cool. You know, uh -huh. Right? Yeah. So uh, Home to Temple and Green Mata, uh, which is a vegan burger operator, they uh, held a business signing ceremony on Sunday and this particular vegan burger is now going to be sold both online and at uh, offline, select off offline stores as well. All right. So if you're into something new and trendy at the temple, this <laughs> is it. I mean, if yeah. you want to get your hands on a recycled coffee sack bag, which is so much cooler than your other average eco bags, if you will. <laughs> and also the temple plans to export these uh, vegan burgers as oh. well, including New York City uh, and uh, some Southeast Asian countries as well in the first half of next year. That's the big plan. All right. Taking veganism to the next yep. level and a temple is leading the way. Now you've yep. heard it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> On to our final buzzword of the day. So for anyone who's a dog owner, you know how it's difficult to take your puppy anywhere in Seoul City. It's it's a crowded, dense city and it's a concrete jungle. Now, Duksan Public Swimming Pool for dogs, proving to be popular for that very reason. It's, I believe, the first of its kind in a Hangang Park. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with a question. Does Bagel, your dog, like to swim? No. No. (laughs) It's a myth to think that all dogs love swimming. That's just so far removed from the truth. Uh Um, You have to train them really young for them to like water, to be not scared of water. And my dog, ironically, is a scaredy cat. And so (laughs) I it would be torturous for him. Okay. Well, anyways, um, this dog pool we're talking about this morning, it's a public swimming pool Mm. for dogs. It opened at uh, Tuksam Hangang Park on Saturday. Uh, you know, the pool, you know, from from uh, from a distance looks like a kiddie pool, basically. It it's looks small. like a small yeah. children's swimming pool. It's about 15 meters wide, 10 meters long. It has some parasols around the pool. And yeah, it, w- it opened over the weekend. And uh, at around 3 p.m. yesterday, there were around 40 dog owners inside the pool with their dogs. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I read a news article for those, uh, you know, who, who's worried about like hygiene, yeah. things, like, you know, I mean, these are dogs, they, they, they shed hair and, uh, they, they poo and they pee, you know, but the water is clean. Okay. Um, and, uh, the staff members are on standby the entire time to remove dog hair and whatever else is floating <laughs> on the water. Lovely. And, uh, yeah. The, the feedback is generally really positive. Dog owners who use the pool with their dogs said that they were generally really satisfied with the, the swimming pool. Because despite my dog being scared of the water, there are dogs <laughs> who enjoy being in the water and there aren't so many affordable swimming pool options for dogs in the city of Seoul. If you go outside of the city, maybe, but can we do that regularly? Not quite. And this free, right. free pool is, it might just be the only of its kind because Nothing is free in Seoul. Correct. So um, many of the doggy pools that require a fee are apparently, I don't know because I don't have a dog, uh, they're priced at 15,000 won for dogs and 10,000 won for dog owners. Um, a day out with the family, the entire family and the dog could cost a dog owner well over 50,000 won. So, you know, the, the, this pool uh, being open and being free, that's an extra perk for dog owners. Okay, so if your dog loves the water, <laughs> Tuksam Hangang Park might be your yeah. answer. Uh, what other services does the pool offer? Yeah, so not all dogs know how to swim, like you said. Mm. Um, if your dog cannot swim but still wants to enjoy the water, <laughs> you can borrow a life jacket <laughs> for your dog as well. Oh, my gosh, there are photos. They're so cute. And there's a photo of this one dog sitting in a tiny boat afloat, <laughs> right? And uh, I think those can be rented as well uh, by the pool. Anyways, um, this doggy pool is uh, being operated. It's It's on a trial basis, so okay. it's receiving feedback from users. Uh, The pool will be open every day until September 24th. Um, However, there are specific days of the week that are that are open for specific dogs, like based on their size. Mm -hmm. So the pool is open to small and medium sized dogs on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. And uh, it welcomes larger dogs mm-hmm. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And this is to prevent accidents and a whole lot of chaos. Anyways, uh, Soul City says uh, it's been getting a lot of feedback from visitors. And, you know, some people suggested heating up the pool, you know, once the weather gets cooler in the mm-hmm. autumn season. And, you know, based on all of this feedback, Soul City plans to perhaps extend the, the days of operation, even seasons. We'll have to see. Wait and see. We'll have to see as it's a pilot run for now. I imagine that on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays when the large dogs are present, the pool will feel teeny tiny. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. For me, it just looks like a really cute image. Thank you so much, Erica, for today's coverage. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.